Hi, I'm Andrew. And I'm Dave, and we're the IB English Guys. And today we're going to talk about writing about opinion editorials. Oh, I love writing, Mr. Oh, Giles. I'm really excited okay. about this. Giles, give me a little reminder. This isn't the first time we've talked about op-eds. Remind me of what we've done. That's right. We've done two previous videos that are really important that you watch because we break down the features of opinion editorials and opinion writing, but we also look at Leonard Pitts, this incredible opinion writer as a, as a great author and a body of work. We love Leonard Pitts. He's helped us become better at reading op-eds, and he's helped our students become better writers as well. Okay, now when we looked at op-eds, Mr. Giles, we did use a mnemonic device to help us remember the key attributes and elements of op-eds. Aunt Vera, are you here? Aunt Vera's making an appearance. She is here. So here we go. Honor Aunt Vera because she requires care and love. All right, let me go. Honor Aunt Vera because she requires care and love. And love. I got it. All right, it That's works. Awesome. What That's do these great. things stand for? Okay, the H is for headlines and hooks. The A stands for anecdotes or stories. Yeah, the V is voice. The B is background or news. S is structure, how it's put together. The R, of course, is the reader connection. Yeah, and the C is that closing and that call to action. And don't forget the L, language, because we like language. Yeah, that's right. So we want to use these, this mnemonic to help us deconstruct. So in our first video, we looked at a powerful opinion piece, and we looked at that in, in a lot of detail, and it was about the George Floyd murder, and it is it is a powerful opinion piece and it, an important topic to, yeah, to read folks, about. If you haven't read that, please go back and watch the last video where Dave and I break that down because... The writing is very complex and it's quite serious today, but we want to make sure you understand the text, okay? Yeah, and I think like to be able to really get a lot out of this uh, out of this video, uh, knowing something about the opinion piece is important. It's linked down below as well for you to read. And so this is the this is the pa the the text that that I wrote a piece a, a paper one on, and the entire paper one is is there for you to look at. But we want to take a part of that. Yeah, we want to break down Mr. Giles' writing today and show you how he made that. Okay, folks, this is paper one. So I know that there's got to be a guiding question. I must answer the guiding question. Okay, Mr. Giles, now that we've gone over the mnemonic, let's remember that today we're working on paper one. Okay, so that means there's going to be a guiding question. Students and teachers, uh, remember we did an earlier video about 10 tips for paper one. You might want to refresh your memory on some of those aspects because we'll be implementing those today. Giles, because it's paper one and there's a guiding question, let's hear it. What's yeah. the guiding question you wrote on? This is a guided analysis as paper one is. So the question is, how does the author use persuasive language to convey an opinion on race? Ooh, okay. The first thing I tell my students to do is highlight keywords that force you to, that are guiding you? What are the words that are guiding you in this analysis? Well, the technical and formal element that they're making me look at is persuasive language. Again, how he's using that powerful language to, to get me to, uh, you know, adhere to his opinion. Right, but we couldn't just write about choices, so what's the other half that you have to do? Yeah, they're asking me to think about his, how he uses that to convey an opinion on race. So those are our key phrases for, from the guiding question. Okay, now we've looked at this piece in detail before and we've broken it down. This thesis is not coming out of thin air, but Giles, what's your thesis gonna be for this piece? Yeah, I let Leonard Pitts give me the thesis because he's giving a persuasive piece and he's powerful in his language. So this is what I wrote in my thesis. I said, in his opinion article, Leonard Pitts uses language effectively to suggest that the eternal frustration and anger of African Americans regarding systemic racism has reached a breaking point. That is an impressive and insightful thesis, okay? Uh, I love how you've linked into the, the key aspects of the question. The word language is there. You definitely have an important so what, and I think it's insightful. It really tells me Pitts' opinion and kind of where this piece is going, okay? Now, Giles, that's a good thesis. I like that, but that's not all the way through. How are you going to organize this paper? Yeah, that was one of our tips is that you come up with a, a you look at the guiding question, then you got to make a plan or an outline. So I had to think about, okay, what are the ideas that I want to talk about? All thinking about the persuasive language, but trying to connect to ideas. So I made a very simple outline. So you can see that outline here. I talked about the history of racism and the references to Martin Luther King. Then I'm going to talk about that frustration and anger. Then I'm going to move on and look at the, the background on George Floyd, what he says about that. Then I'm going to have that link to Colin Kaepernick. Then we see other forms of racism that are being discussed. And finally, I want to talk about his call to action and his concluding words. Mr. Giles, i got to be honest. 
That's a pretty ambitious plan. When you tack on an intro and a conclusion, you've got a lot of paragraphs there. Can you talk about sort of the length of these paragraphs? Yeah, I'm, I'm almost thinking like time. I'm spending less than 10 minutes per paragraph. I need to be really mindful of the clock. I've only got 75 minutes to write this baby, so I need to really... Yeah, yeah, I we, need to have a lot to say. We I, encourage our students to do 10 to 12 minute paragraphs, and I think that should be a target for you as well, okay? Yeah. All right, Josh, let's dig into this text a little bit and kind of uh, unpack and tell us what you've done here. Yeah, so I want to first look, let's look at the introduction. A lot of kids asked, like, can you talk about how to write an introduction? So there's sort of three things that we did in the introduction. The first one is we want to have a good hook. Why is a good hook a good idea? Mr. Giles, there's a lot of reasons. One, you have a reader who's reading this piece. Yes, it's textual analysis, but that doesn't mean you can't engage your reader. Start with something interesting. Let the, let the examiner or your reader know that you're a breathing, living entity, not just a textual analysis machine. The hook's important. The hook yeah. engages the reader. There, you know, there are plenty of bad hooks, and we want to make sure that our hook has said something. Yeah, so, don't, don't give me the rhetorical question as a hook. Get, say something. And I borrowed some of Pitts' language. So again, I quoted that. I talked about the revolving door nightmare. I talked about the whole idea of the other and how people are treated and how this is really, you know, we would just ask how long this is going to go on. Now, Giles, you said there were three things that you wanted to include in your introduction. What was something else you wanted to put yeah, in there? Yeah, I think that the middle part, I try to I try to identify the text type. I try to also summarize what the text is about. That's really good. That proves to the examiner or your reader that, hey, this person has read and understood the text. They can summarize the text. That shows you've understood the content. That's yeah, so I've got a hook. I've got a summary, and then finally, I want to end with a really strong thesis that captures the, the technical and formal element, but also connects to that sort of main argument or main claim of the text. And if you notice, he did say global issue for a minute, and that's a common mistake we see in our yes, students. Remember, is. global issue goes to the I.O. It does not go to the paper one, and that's okay. It happens to the best of us. Okay? corrected. All right, Giles. I like your intro. How are we going to get into the body today? Tell okay. us what body paragraph you're going to work on and tell us, take us through that. That's right. So we're just going to look at my first body paragraph. That's the first point on my outline. That is that connection to history and that reference to Martin Luther King, that allusion to Martin Luther King that is really the, it's kind of the backbones of, of this op-ed. I think it's so important. Did you say backbone? I did. Okay. I did. Go on. Yeah. So in the first part of my body paragraph, my topic sentence tries to establish that allusion to Martin Luther King and that connection to history that's important and to show how it's a criticism of systemic racism that exists now. And then I talked about the black and white image that I saw. I also I talked about the direct quotation um, from Martin Luther King. So Mr. King. Giles, I noticed uh, there's three different colors of highlighting here. I see yellow, blue, and orange. Can you talk a little bit about the highlighting and why you've made those choices? Yeah, so when I look at the yellow is really those the technical and formal aspect, that use of persuasive language, the techniques of the text. So that would be time for you to look down and you see a nice list of persuasive terms. That's where he's getting that yellow language from. Well, what's happening with the orange, Giles? Yeah, the orange is any reference to the author. I want to think about author's choices. So I want to put Pitts in in the driver's seat a lot of my sentences. Folks, I've said this many times and I'll say it one more time. Don't talk about the text. Talk about the, how the author uses the text to push a message. Yeah. Very different. I love that, Giles. And lastly, talk about the, the blue. What is yeah. the blue reference? The blue are the textual references when I'm quoting the text. I want to quote the text often. So if you look at my sample highlighted paper, you'll see that blue is kind of lit up. Yeah, and all these highlights go right to the criteria. Continue, Mr. Giles. Take us through the paragraph. Yeah, so my next section is really looking at his, his word choice and that sort of lexical cluster of words that relate to religion. We see the word spake, which is sort of an antiquated word used almost from the Bible. And again, the word deliverance and oh Lord, is again these references that connect to Martin Luther King and that illusion that's made. Yeah, and I think by quoting the Bible as well, it just shows how long the struggle has been. I mean, this, this goes way back. You know, he's, he's quoting biblical language to talk about racism in a very interesting way. That's right, that's right. My third section is, is looking at the present, the way he uses the metaphor of the revolving door to show that 55 years later, this is still going on. And this is where I think he's linking the past with the present. Yeah, and I really like the way you unpack that metaphor and tell us how, what that means and what it represents. And, and definitely talking about what the list signifies to the reader. It signifies the plight and the never-ending seemingly struggle for, for equality among African Americans or the other. Yeah, so there's a couple of takeaways from today's video. I think I think the first one is when you think about a paper one, you've got to keep that technical and formal element in your mind. You gotta also make a plan and an outline and have an idea of what your what your plan is going to be and try to execute that. You gotta keep those things in mind while you're writing and make sure you're talking about the technical aspects, 
quoting the text often, talking about author choices. It seems like a lot to manage, but when you get used to it, you get into the flow, you can really, I think you can really unpack yeah, the text so really Yeah, so our students really understand this highlighting system and they highlight all of their papers. It really ensures that they're focused on the rubric and really meeting the expectations of the task, okay? Yeah. We hope you highlight too. Yeah. Folks, we hope this writing video has been helpful for you. We kind of really want to just peel back the curtain and show you what we're trying to do when we, when we craft these responses, okay? Uh, again, if you like the content, subscribe. Let us know what you want to learn about. We're here to make videos for you always, okay? Uh, thank you for watching and have a great day. Bye, Bye everyone.